bless you, church. You're welcome to the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Are you happy this evening? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just worship him. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Turn around to your brother. Welcome, your brother. Welcome, your sister. Amen. With a smile on your face. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. We're holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Will the elders and angels bow, the redeemed. Thank you, Jesus. Come and redeem. Let's praise him. Let's worship him tonight. The elders and the angels with power. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. We know amazing grace, how sweet the sound. We know what it means to be lost and found. We know what it means to be sick and be healed. Oh, come and redeem. Let's praise him. Let's worship him, young people. The angel is here tonight. of the Lord this evening. Please turn with me to your Bibles, to the book of Psalms. Psalms 150. Amen. Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Amen. Praise him for his mighty act. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Amen. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the cymbal and dance. Praise him with the strange instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. 
So this evening, we have bread in us, we have life in us, and we're here to praise Him. Lord, our dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercy. Thank you for Sunday service, Lord. How you spoke to us those precious words, Father, Lord, we are your servant. And Lord, we are here this evening, bold and courageous, Father, to approach your throne of mercy, Father. Lord, we are here for this Wednesday prayer meeting, Lord. We ask you take all the honor, Father, take all the glory, Lord. May you take us out of the way, Father. And Lord, may you give us virtue power for service, Lord. Lord, we don't know what to pray for, Lord, but we know that that spirit is here to make intercessions for us, Lord Jesus. Lord, may you heal as many who are sick in body, Father. Those who need transformation, Father. Those who are looking for one opportunity or the other, Father. May this service be their turning point, Father. Lord, as many on their way coming, may you hasten their footsteps, Lord, and bless the few songs. At the end of the service, all the praise and honor will go back to your name in Jesus' mighty name. And the saints say, Amen. Amen. Oh, may me more like you. Oh, Jesus, make me. desire this evening. Say, Lord, make me more.
know this part, but let's listen to this part. When I know the Lord is coming back woo, for me. When I know the Lord is coming back, he's coming back for you, for you, for your family. When Since 2021, I've been asking the Lord to correct my physics result that was re recorded failed. I wrote letter some, I wrote, I wrote um, letter, amen, it wasn't attended to and some abandoned. I got discouraged. I went ahead to register for the course, but today... I logged into my portal and saw the result corrected and already uploaded. Amen. It says, therefore, I've come to say God did it again. May his marvelous name be praised forever. Amen. What a testimony. Amen. I have my own testimonies too. And I believe you have your own testimony. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen and amen. You see, you cannot stand for God and God will neglect you. Amen and amen. So young people, it's time to mean business with our maker. Amen. As the brothers will make their way forward for the evening offering. Amen.
your hands together this evening. If you know Jesus has to be upon put your hands this evening and give God a shout of praise. One more song. And no devil can hold. And no devil can hold. Hold my body. Hold my body down. Woo! Hold my body. Can never, 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 never. Woo! Can never. Corruption could not hold his body down because corruption knew his master. And so this evening, we are singing, we are testifying that no devil, no disappointment, no sickness, no trouble can hold our body down. Every head bow, every eye close. Now, dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we've sang and we've worshipped you, Father. Lord, it's time to, Lord, open your word, Father, to see what you have for us, Father. Lord, we ask that may you open our eyes of understanding, Lord, and open our heart, Lord Jesus. We know that the entrance of your word giveth light, Lord. Father, may your word, Father, bring healings, Lord Jesus. May your word bring deliverance, Lord Father. Lord, we pray and ask as many on their way coming once more that you hasten their footsteps. At the end of it all, all praise and honor go back to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Let's turn to our Bibles. Amen. And then we turn to a very familiar scripture. It's in Luke chapter 17. It's in Luke 17 from verse 26, 30. Amen. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you, you may be seated. And we know that that Elijah, that seventh angel, Malachi 4, came and revealed to us amen in Luke 17 30. Is that right? Amen and amen. So this evening, I have a title, The Setting of God. Amen. And Brother Abraham said, first, before you do anything, before you do anything, you have to be certain in your heart that it is God. Is that right? 
I repeat that again. Brother Bram said, before you do anything, you have to be certain and be sure in your heart that it is God. It means before you go into marriage, if you're preparing to marry, is that right? You have to be sure that it is God. Amen. You have to pray and pray until. Amen. You don't just pray one week and then you go to the pastor. Pastor, I'm done. He's the one. Or pastor, she's the one. But Abraham said, before you do anything, you have to be certain that it is God. That is how it is spiritual. Amen. From the day you accepted the Lord Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Amen. You have to be ready to face persecution. Amen. Amen. Is that right? The day you accept to follow Jesus, the day you accept to take up your cross and follow him, you will be called all kinds of names. You will be laughed at, you will be mocked, you will be called different kinds of names. Amen. But that does not shake a believer. And Brother Abraham said, once you are certain, once you are sure it is God, then your faith goes to work. Amen. Once you are certain that it is God, then your faith becomes steady in the word. Your faith becomes unshakable. Your faith becomes unmovable. Amen. You don't care what the next person is doing, what, what the next person is doing. Your attention is focused on the cross. Is that right? So this evening, I'm encouraging us be certain of God. 2023, we have to be sure and be certain of God. Amen. When Abraham said, when Abraham said that before you do anything, he was speaking from experience. Amen. Because Brother Abraham passed through a lot. Amen. He saw, he, he saw different kinds of things. Amen. And, and you know, Brother Abraham told us that God always loved to test our faith. And Brother Abraham said that God will bring you to a spot where he wants to see the reaction of your faith. Is that right? So here, here is God's prophet, Will and Mar Abraham. Amen. God took everything from him. Took his wife. Took his, took his daughter. Amen. Took his mom. It got to a point where Abraham was even preaching on the pulpit. And the news broke to him that he has lost his mom. Yet, Abraham continued preaching. Why? He was certain of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But Abraham told us that Job was mocked and he was called all kinds of names. He was even called a secret sinner. Is that right? But that did not hinder Job. That did not stop Job because his faith was anchored in the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job knew that he has met all the requirements. And Brother Abraham said, when you know that you have met all the requirements, then your faith becomes steady in the word. So Job knew that he has, he has met all the requirements. He knew that he has made all the bond sacrifice. He knew that he was not a sinner. But yet God tested his faith to see his reaction. How did God test his faith? God took away everything that was so valuable to Job. God took away all the camels, all the cattle, took away all his friends. God took away his children. And Brother Abraham said that his children were the closest to his heart. Can you imagine that? It got to a point even his wife told Job, Oga, just curse God and die. My, blessed be the name of the Lord. But Job did not. Job said to his wife, you speak like one of those foolish women. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God tested Job and he what? He passed that test. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If God can test Job, what about you and I? See, God can bring you to a spot. That thing that looks so, so precious to you, that thing that looks so dear to you, that thing that is so close to your heart, God can decide to take it away from you to test your faith. Amen. That thing could be your wife. It could be your husband. It could be your certificate. <laughs> Amen. It could be your job. 
It could be anything just to see the reaction of your faith. Is that right? Look at John Ryan. He was blind. He came to Bram Tepana to be praying. He came to the prayer line and he was prayed for the first time. He went back home. He came back again. He went back to be prayed. Amen. But Brother Abraham spotted him. I've prayed for you for the first time. Why are you here? Go and proclaim your healing. It was a test of faith. Is that right? And John Ryan went to the street and he became a madman. Amen. Praise God, I'm healed. Praise God, I'm healed. Until one day. Say one day. Say one day. He went to the barber shop to have a clean shave. And while he was seated in the barber shop, inspiration struck him. And immediately he said, praise God, I'm healed. Amen. And immediately his eyes popped open. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In this end time, in these days that we are living, many eyes will pop open. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Do you believe that? John Ryan was setting of God. But Abraham said, you may be sick. You have been prayed for. But yet, God is still silent. What is that? A test of faith. <laughs> Praise God. You may have been praying for a particular thing, maybe for a job, maybe for something else, and yet God is silent. What is that? A test of faith. To see your reaction. To see whether you will leave the message. To see whether you will leave the church. Amen. Look at those three Hebrew boys. They were setting of God. They knew that they have met all the requirements. They refused to bow down to the idols. They say, oh king, we are, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. Eh? Is that right? They say they, they, they know that they are serving a living God who is more than able to deliver them from the fiery furnace. Praise God. Did God deliver them? What was that? They were setting of God. Yet God tested their faith. They threw them into the fiery furnace. But what happened? There was a fourth man. And God opened the eyes of King Nebuchadnezzar. And he saw that fourth man. Praise God. You don't understand it. They may be troubling you in your office. Troubling you in your school. It is a fiery furnace. But one day, God will open their eyes. And they will realize that it's not you. There's a fourth man behind you. Oh, give the Lord a shout of praise this evening. My, 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 my. Do you know that even Jesus Christ himself, he was certain, he knew what he came to do on this planet earth. Amen. When he told them, destroy this temple, and in three days, I will raise it up again. Amen. They were, this temple took Solomon 48 years to build. How, how are you saying you bring it up in three, three days? They never knew that he was talking about his body. But Abraham said but that, that Jesus Christ was not contemplating that maybe I will raise it up. Maybe I will think on how to raise it up. But Abraham said Jesus himself was certain that in three days. Amen. That is the Lord, that is the Lord Jesus Christ we're serving. Is that right? When Lazarus died, amen, and he went to, to Lazarus' tomb, he, he met Martha, and Martha said, Lord Jesus, if you had been here, Lazarus, my brother, had not had died. Is that right? And Jesus said, where have you laid him? Where have you buried him? He knew that he was setting, he knew that when he gets there, Lazarus will come up again. Is that right? And whatsoever that is dead in your life, it may be that your spiritual life is dead. It may be that you can hardly have time to pray. It may be that you, that you can hardly have time to study the word or the spoken word. When Jesus comes, when Jesus comes, you shall be revived again. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Let me read you a quotation. Amen. Let's hear what God's prophet has for us. And then you will know the hour and the season that we are living. It's an hour for us to mean business and be serious with God. Amen. Amen, brother. Right. Escape you that come quickly. Now, Brother Abraham says, Now I believe if there ever was a day when men and women ought to open their eyes and look into the word of God is today. This is the day because there may not be tomorrow. Amen. And if the church ever buckled on its armor, it should be today. Don't put it off one more day. For Abraham said, if there is anything between you and God, mm, I'll take that again. If there is anything between you and God to keep you from going in the rapture, you better make it right now. Don't leave your seat. For Abraham said, we are living in the expectation of the soon coming of the blessed Lord. And we are watching for the hour, Jesus said himself. When you see these things begin to come to pass, lift up your head. Your redemption draweth nigh. Signs in the sky, fearful sights, man's heart failing for fear. The sea are roaring, tidal waves, great things taking place. And we see great things today taking place. Every hour, every minute, the world is set to collapse. Tribulation is set to come in. Is that right? And Brother Abraham said, now listen. And I know some might get in their head. Brother Abraham, why are you continually pounding at these things? Brother Abraham said, it is on my heart. And I know that it's supposed to be pounded at today. And sometimes when you see the pastor pounding on those things, pounding on the word, Brother Israel coming here, pounding on the word, Brother William, Brother Kemi pounding on the word. It has been made in our heart. We are not bringing our own, our own idea. What we are saying is what the Bible has said and what the prophet has already said. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And listen, I like what Brother Abraham said. Brother Abraham said, if there's anything between you and God to keep you from going in the rapture, you better make it right now. It is an individual affair. Rebram said salvation is individual affair. Salvation is not a family affair. It's not a group affair. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, listen. Brother Abraham said, Brother Abraham said, as, as simple as the rapture is, many will miss it. Amen. And Brother Abraham is not talking about this many out there. He was referring to Abraham Tabernacle. Many will miss it. Many who claim to be in the message for years will miss the rapture. You've been in the message for years, yet you cannot forgive. It will take divine love to take us up. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I have been in the message for years and I don't have experience. I don't have the Holy Ghost. So Abraham said, as simple as the rapture is, as simple as the message is, as simple as Christ was, many missed him in his day. Many missed William Bram in his day because he was, he was not educated. But God was veiled in that uneducated man. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You may not be educated. You may not have the world riches, but you have Christ in you, which is the hope of glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, I'm encouraging us tonight. Be setting of God, not as a family, not as a group, but as an individual. Many are called, but few are chosen. It's a fight. We have to fight every inch of ground to make sure that we make it in the rapture.
Brother Abraham said, when that tribulation comes, the bride will not be here to witness it. And I believe that you don't want to be here also to witness the tribulation. I believe you are here because you want to make the rapture. You want your family to be there. You want your friends to be there. So right about now, we'll hit our knees. We'll go down on our knees and ask God and say, Lord, have mercy upon us. If you know that you are not sure of your walk with God, if you know you are not certain of your walk with God, let today be a turning point. God bless you. setting of God, where are you standing? Are you standing on holy ground? Are you standing on the enemy's camp? Just know that you cannot be victorious on the enemy's camp. We need to be setting of God for this battle is getting more fierce and fiercer. It's getting more raging. It's getting more, more disastrous as the day goes by. What we need in this hour we need that same power that fell on the day of Pentecost. We need that same power that them apostles had on the day of Pentecost. And there's a prophecy. Will and Mara Abraham said, we will have the same pay. This Omega bride, we have the same pay that the Alpha bride had. Every promise in the book is yours. The devil will want to make you feel condemned. The devil will want to make you feel as if you are not justified. But you have already been justified. As many as I found you, I called. As many as I have called, I already glorify. Oh, come on now. You are justified.
The atmosphere is getting more darker and darker and darker every day. The devil is infiltrating homes. The devil is infiltrating our hearts, caging our hearts, that we can hardly, we can hardly spare time to talk to Jesus. We can hardly spare time to study the word. Be setting of God. Brother Abraham said, Before you do anything, huh, before you do anything, as flat as that statement is. without Jesus you've got to be certain you've got to be sure that it is Jesus you need to make him the center of it all Jesus at the center of it Jesus in your home Jesus in your affair ruling your affair directing your path in your thoughts <laughs> prophet Noah in his day he was setting of God he was sure that God had met him one on one and gave him a message the message of the ark and no one knew that he had met all the requirement no one knew that it will rain because God has said it and he believed it and we have a message for our day the message of the ark William Brown brought that message and he was certain, he was sure that that angel commissioned him. Brother Abraham knew that the tribulation will come. Brother Abraham knew that judgment will strike. What are, what are we doing about it, friends? Are we like them in Noah's day that ate, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage, but they did not know when Noah entered the ark? We have to be certain, friends. We have to be setting up the message of the hour. There is power in the message. This message is not powerless. It is powerful. This message is powerful and it can bring you out of any condition. When Noah entered the ark, <laughs> Brother Abraham said, God himself shut the doors and mercy was over. One of these days, young people, one of these days, church, that door will be shut and God himself will shut that door of mercy and then it will be judgment. And if you don't have the Holy Ghost, that will be over. Now it is time for us to cry out. Now it is time for us to groan like they did in the upper room. We groan and pray for the Holy Ghost. We show so much concern in the things of the world and we don't show more concern in God's word we don't show we don't pay attention to what the prophet has said the prophet has given us these things because
Lord, he knows that in these days, that perilous times will come. The prophet knows that in this time, if you don't have something to hold on to, if your faith is not holding on to God's unchanging hand, you cannot survive. Brother Bram said, there is an oncoming storm, friends. There is an oncoming storm. If you are building, build wisely. Let your foundation be upon that rock, which is Christ. So that when that storm comes, it will not flood you. It will not sweep you up. It will not sweep your family. Let your family be under the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Moses said, not one hoof will be left behind. In every homes, we have Moses in our homes. We have to stand our ground and say, let the devil hear us that not one hoof will be missing. Your daughter will not be missing. Your son will not be missing. We all will make it to the rapture. All that you love and all that you ever love we we'll make it in the rapture. It is time to be desperate, friends. If there's a time that we need to be more desperate, it is now. But Abraham said that we are living in the expectations of the coming of the blessed Lord Jesus Christ. What more are we expecting rather than the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ? The entirety of the spoken word, the entirety of this message of the hour is to prepare us, prepare a church, prepare a bride for the second coming of the Lord. We have to be certain, friends. We have to be sure. Making preparation for the coming of the Lord. One time God's prophet told us that we have to apply the token. We have to apply the token because the death angel is about to strike. These devils have been positioned everywhere. They have been positioned in every corner, in every angle, in even, even in our homes, in our streets. They have been positioned. They are about to strike, friends. But one thing is certain, if you have the token, if you have the blood, they will pass over you. The setting of God, friends. Be like those three Hebrew boys, young people, who be a setting of God. Even in the face of tribulation, they were setting up God. Even in the face of trial, their faith was unmovable. Their faith was steady in the unfailing word of God. Because they knew that that same God that made that promise, he's more than able to fulfill that promise. And he said that I will not leave you, nor forsake you. I will be with you, even now to the end of the world. It is time to cry out. Look at that widow woman. That widow woman and kings. That fed God's prophet. Elijah. Brother Abraham said in her day. There were so many widow women, but God chose that very widow woman to feed God.
God's prophet. She knew she had nothing. She knew that the, the last thing that she had was just for her and her son. But she was inspired of God. But Abraham said she was certain of God because she knew that Elijah was the prophet of God. And here we are today. I am just like that widow woman. I am just like that widow woman. All that I have right now is just for me. It's just for me. But I know that when Abraham came on the scene and I gave my all. I gave my all. Can you just give your all tonight? Keep your all tonight. Don't allow the devil to rob you of your blessings. Don't allow the devil to shut your mouth. A closed mouth is a closed destiny. Open your mouth. Say something. Say something tonight. been sleeping too much it is time to wake up brother Abraham said now I believe if there was ever a day when men and women to open the, up their eyes and look into the word of God it is today it is today if there was ever a time that you need to open your eyes and look into the world it's today but Abraham said it's not tomorrow there may not be tomorrow tomorrow is not promising why wait until tomorrow before you pray why not to pray now we we'll keep praying until, we we'll keep praying until, until something happens. But Abraham said, we need to buckle up. We need to put on our spiritual jackets. We need to pray that our eyes of understanding be open. The signs of the end time, we are ready for feeling. We don't have much time on this earth. But Abraham kept saying, time no longer, time no longer. It is later than we think. So we need to be certain of God. Let's not live our life as if we have 20 more years, 30 more years, 50 more years to live. Time is short. We are already in the junction of time. And I love this part. God's prophet, God's prophet is telling us, if there is anything, uh, if there is anything between you and God that will hinder you from going in the rapture, bring it before God tonight. Tonight, 
let it go in the name of the Lord let it go tonight in the name of Jesus Christ that thing that is hindering you from walking with Jesus let it go let it go it may be what they lost it may be fornication let it go tonight let it go tonight let it go tonight let that pride of life go tonight the lost of the flesh the lost of the eyes let it go tonight we must die to ourselves die to our thinking brother Brown said three things three things that a believer should be careful of lust for money lust for women lust for popularity these things we should be dead to them. That pillar of fire is here tonight. That pillar of fire is here tonight. The Bible says, the coming of the Lord, Jesus is coming, will definitely interrupt someone else's program. And the Bible says, make your calling and election sure. <laughs> Jesus will not wait. Martha said to Jesus, even now, even now, Lord, she was certain, she was sure. She knew that her brother Lazarus will live again. I want to challenge your feet tonight. Even now, Lord, what is that condition that seems to be Impossible. Even now, Lord, what is that thing that seems to be dead in your life? Even now, there shall be a resurrection. Even now, that dead shall live again. You have been praying for years. You've been waiting for years. You've been longing for years to see that thing come to pass. Even now. Once you are setting of God, all those 
your short dresses, you will burn them off. Because you don't want that thing to hinder you from making the rapture. Huh? Brother Brown said, if there's anything, 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 God's prophet pounded over these things. And that same voice, Woo! not my voice, not the voice of the pastor, not the voice of Brother Israel, but that same voice, that same angel is pounding. That same angel is here. You think it's a man? Wait and see. One of these days, you will realize that it's not a man, but that angel. Right now, begin to make your request known. What are your requests tonight? I don't know what you've come here expecting God to do for you tonight. It's a prayer meeting. Don't leave this building the same way you came in. Let something happen down in your soul, in your heart. Many a times, the problem is that we are afraid to ask. But the Bible says, if you can ask anything in my name, I will do it. So right about now, begin to ask. Knowing that if you ask, you will receive it. God is not a man that he lies. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. Whatsoever you ask of him tonight, have faith, believe God that you will receive it tonight. Are you trusting God for the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Ask him tonight. We need the Holy Ghost. How can we survive out there empty? No, we need something on the inside. Let me remind you, friends, that the devil is not tired. The devil knows that his time is short. 
So he's doing everything that he can do quickly. Quickly. We must not be tired, friends. We can talk too much. We can play too much, eat too much. But we can never pray too much. How do we tame these devils in this last day? so calm. How, is that how you want to tame the devil? We need rugged men and women of faith. We need warriors of faith. If you know you don't have faith, say, Lord, it means my faith. We need, we need fire in this generation. We need young men, young women. We need a revival to strike in our hearts, to strike in our homes, to strike in this church. That the entire Calabar we know that there's a group of people who have met Jesus. has collapsed. The economy has failed. Education has failed. The polity has failed. Religion itself has failed. Our homes have failed. But Jesus has not failed yet. For heaven and earth will pass away. But my word, what is that word? Christ. In a wedding form, Christ becoming flesh. That word has not failed tonight. Do you think Christ will fail you? The answer is no. Our problem is that we have left Jesus. We have left Jesus. And you cannot leave Jesus in, your, in the boat. You have to go with him.
the church, the real believer, is looking for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Something in their heart moving. That is what we are looking for. Something that we cannot explain. We are looking for the move of the Holy Ghost. Something has got to move you, friends. <laughs> Something has got to move your family. There has got to be a sheep. There must be a sheep, friend. From the way we are behaving, from the way we do things, from the natural to the supernatural. We cannot remain carnal. We cannot remain fleshy. We cannot remain natural. We cannot be weak, friends. We have to be strong. is warning us tonight. God is warning the church. God is warning our homes. He's warning every heart, warning every young people. The same way he has won the plants, he has won the animals in the time of Noah. He's warning us tonight. He's warning us of that great jump that is coming. Brother Abraham said, if there's anything, and I repeat, if there's anything between you and God that will hinder you, it could be sin. Brother Abraham said, God hates sin, and sin must be judged. It's time for mercy, friends. It's time for grace. Why not lay it on the altar? It's important. Now that you have the breath, now that you have life in you, to make things right with your maker, why not make it right? For there's coming a time you will not have time again. Church, headstone, right to Banaco. 
We know how the devil is fighting, fighting the church, especially in this hour. But we have a promise. And what is that promise? The gate of hell cannot prevail. Not this church. We know the prophet said that the beauty of the church is the character of the people. That is what we need. Men of reputable character, sisters, young people of reputable character, that is what we need. And that character can only come by the spoken word revealed for our day by that authenticated prophet of God. Let's commit the sequence among us. Brother Samson. Let's pray that God will perfect his healing. Touch him, strengthen him. As many who are seeking body tonight, kindly remember them. Bring them before the, the Lord and say, Lord, heal my brother, heal my sister. Brother Jude, Brother Timothy, Brother William Justice, Brother Kemi. Let's pray for all. the affirmation that God will bless them in their post of duty. Fuel them with His Spirit. Anoint them. That God will blind the eyes of the wicked from seeing them. Pray for more inspiration.
Amen. God bless you. Let's stand to our feet. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap of praise.
Guess what? And he will help you over the world. Uh, a victory to win. Why not just raise your hands and close your eyes? Thirty seconds of your time.
be you, Father, take us home to the highways and the byways, Lord, as we move not out of your presence. May you bring us back again on Sunday, Father, on fire for you. This we ask and pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. And the saints say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank you. 